What is going on, folks? It is your boy, Crypto Bobby. I hope you're having a great day, great night, wherever you're watching or listening in from. And today, we lost a real one. We've lost an OG. It's time to pour one out for one of the GOAT shitcoin exchanges from back in the day. One of the most popular exchanges of 2017, Poloniex, otherwise affectionately referred to as Polo. And we'll actually dive into a little bit more today about what happened with, with Polo in general and how Circle's $400 million acquisition of Poloniex was probably, if not pretty, pretty clearly the most obvious M&A blunder, merger and acquisition blunder of the young crypto industry to this day. Sure, we'll see some other worst ones in the future, but probably the worst M and A move we've seen in the crypto world to this day. And we'll dive into that and a lot more in today's episode. So, to properly set the stage here, back in February of 2018, February 26th of 2018, to be exact, Circle, which is a crypto company that's been around for a while, had the Circle app. They also had a very uh, popular OTC platform for larger investors. But back in February of 2018, very close to the top of the crypto market, about a month after that, Circle bought Poloniex, which was a cryptocurrency exchange, for about $400 million. And at that point in time, Circle was the 18th largest cryptocurrency exchange by trade volume. And if we look, this is from Frank Shaparo at The Block. But on March of, in March, February and March of 2017, Poloniex had close to 60% of the overall trade volume in cryptocurrency and close to 60% of the overall volume. By that time of the acquisition in February of 2018, that was, that was under 10%. Right now, Poloniex is under 2% of overall volume. So this came out today where Poloniex tweeted that they are spinning out of Circle into a new company with backing by an investment group that plans to spend more than $100 million developing the exchange to offer new features, services, and assets. And then in addition to that, they say, unfortunately, in order to innovate for global customers, U.S. customers will not be included in the spin out. U.S. customers will no longer be able to trade starting on November 1st of 2019 and they will have until at least December 15th to withdraw their assets. So interesting from a couple different perspectives. Number one, I find it pretty crazy that anybody even wants the Poloniex, just like the exchange asset as a whole, uh, clearly is a pretty, uh, it's, it's a business not heading in the right direction from a user acquisition, from a volume acquisition standpoint. Uh, I'm sure if it's a relatively lean team, maybe if it is, then uh, maybe it'll be profitable if they can kind of bring uh, bring some some volume back to the exchange. But number one, I'm relatively surprised that anyone at all, a, a group of investors wanted to spin this out of Circle and to essentially buy Poloniex from Circle. Number two, this is a pretty wild uh, acquisition and something that absolutely had to damage Circle uh, and, and pretty much like a crippling move, which uh, is is pretty unfortunate for for Circle and for any company in the in the crypto space. Like I I definitely would never wish ill will on any company from a financial standpoint, from a growth standpoint. And Pol Circle buying Poloniex for four hundred million dollars. I don't know how much of that was stock or whatever it might have been. How much of it was cash, but. Circle buying Poloniex for four hundred million dollars uh, is a is is I think undoubtedly the worst M and A move we've seen in the crypto industry so far. There's obviously been a lot of other acquisitions. There's been a few acquisitions here and there, some moves that have been okay, and then some moves that have not panned out at all. But there's there've been a lot of of smaller acquisitions, but this in particular was one of the largest, and I would. I would venture to say, you know, this is basically, you know, this is basically pennies to dimes on the dollar that uh, that Poloniex is getting or that Circle is getting in return for that four hundred million dollar investment that they had into Poloniex. So it's a, it's a really tough turnaround for for Circle on the other end of the spectrum. Whoever the the team that was at Poloniex that that sold it, 
that is absolutely selling the top of the market. I don't think they could have done any better than that. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they absolutely crushed it. So, Hey, you know what, if, if somebody wants to buy your company that is clearly on the downtrend and, and not on the up and up anymore for hundreds of millions of dollars and, and they say, yes, Hey, shit, go for it. And then on the other end of the spectrum, this is interesting because Poloniex and, and circle have kind of long been in circle in particular, but there's kind of been this, this discussion around us citizens and regulations are putting us citizens out of the loop. Uh, and because of the, you know, because of regulations, the U S citizens are never going to be able to, to just, they're, they're not going to be able to compete. And a lot of, a lot of what happened with Poloniex to me felt like blaming just bad execution on regulations, which is fine. I think that if you are in the U S if you're a company in the U S and you are actually following the regulatory framework that's in place or the, the lack thereof, or the lack of clarity, whatever it might be, a lot of different things you can argue in general, but if you are actually in the U S and you're following the basically following the laws and the regulations, you are at a disadvantage to these international companies like a Binance, although Binance recently opened up in the US, but you're at, at a disadvantage to these companies internationally that are either flying by the seat of their pants or playing really close to the sun from a regulatory standpoint, uh, and they just don't care as much, and they're kind of moving jurisdictions to jurisdictions, or they just, they're, they're playing a game of regulatory arbitrage while uh, Circle would basically be saying, you know, Poloniex is, is being legit and playing it safe However, I don't think that necessarily justifies the just the, the the fall from grace for Poloniex. You're talking about the most popular cryptocurrency exchange basically in the world in 2017 or mid 2017. That is now an afterthought of an afterthought of an afterthought, and that type of thing. You know, yes, regulations do play a, a part of that, but also. You have to look at some point, you have to look in the mirror and say, hey, what, you know, why did we make this move? Why did this happen? Why did we do this in general? This is an old tweet from Dan McArdle, who's at Masari, the founder of OnChain FX, which I'm a fan of, huge fan of their website. But this was a, a tweet where he kind of joked, and this was over a year ago, but said, land of the free home of opportunity, question mark, not when you try and sign up for the global, global crypto exchanges. US is in the same company with North Korea, Cuba, Iran, Syria, and Sudan. And yes, if you go to BitMEX, you are, as, a, as an American citizen, you are prohibited along with Cuba, Iran, Syria, North Korea, Sudan, and Crimea. Uh, if you, I believe this is Shapeshift, you are censored. If you go to UOB Pro, not available for users. If you go to OKX, not available for US, in addition to Hong Kong, Cuba, Iran, North Korea, Malaysia. So it is really interesting to kind of see this continued pullback of services offered to people in the u.s and a lot of that revolves around the either lack of of perceived lack of clarity or just unhappiness with the 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 potential risk and exposure that servicing u.s customers will have when it does come down to the sec or the cftc or just u.s regulators and, and lawmakers in general going after these these crypto companies and not being afraid to do so. And if you are in the US, it does suck. There are a lot of services that you miss out on and it seems like everybody else and everybody else in the world can do all these interesting things, whether it's shorting uh, margin trading assets on Binance or using BitMEX or using Bitfinex or whatever it might be. There's There's a million different crypto exchanges and investment products. FTT is another one. None of them are available to U.S. citizens. And as a place that obviously has kind of been advertised as the land of the free, it's it's not so much home of the you're allowed to trade shitcoins anymore because uh, most places, and, and sure, there's some ways around them. Rel some websites are relatively easier to get around than others, but it is not an enjoyable thing for a lot of us citizens when it does come down to being able to trade the assets they want to and whether that's long short margin trade it doesn't matter it's just you're you're basically missing out on a lot of opportunities because of that and on twitter today i joked a little bit about the oceans 11 scene if you're listening on the podcast um if you've ever seen oceans 11 there's like the final scene where Ocean, Danny Ocean's Eleven are, are standing outside the the fountains at the Bellagio, and they're all kind of 
longingly looking at the fountains, figuring out what they're going to do with the rest of their lives and gain some level of satisfaction. And then one by one, Brad Pitt leaves and the rest of them leave and the rest of them leave. And it almost feels like we're at that scenario right now in the crypto markets. There's a little bit of like a death by boredom or a capitulation by boredom where Bitcoin is still up over, you know, 2x from from the lows of 2018, where it was at 3500 bucks, $3,400. So Bitcoin is still up a, a significant amount from that. But there just hasn't been a lot of, of crazy action. Volatility has been somewhat low recently. And you're starting to, at least I'm seeing these people that have been involved in the crypto space for, you know, be it two, three, four, five years now, either just getting bored with things, becoming disillusioned with the industry as a whole, uh, not liking how things have transitioned, not liking how the industry is shaping out from their initial beliefs. And you're starting to see this kind of one by one little capitulation uh, that <laughs> reminds me a lot of this scene in Ocean's Eleven, where, like I said, you have these guys that are all kind of looking back and reminiscing on their time together. And it's very much what's happening in the crypto ecosystem right now. Everybody's looking back and kind of laughing and thinking about how crazy 2017 was and how incredible the times were and how much money they made or whatever it might have been. And one by one, people are like, yeah, that's never going to happen again. I'm out. One by one. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. And I'm curious to see if <laughs> how, how things really pan out from that, if that is something that really does make all that much of a difference in the long run or not, but really starting to get a feel that there is this just overwhelming feeling of, of boredom for a lot of people in the crypto industry. And you're starting to lose more people, at least online than we are gaining. That's just my random thought and Ocean's Eleven comparison. Haven't seen the movie in a while, but love that scene. Love Claire de Lune. It's a wonderful song. So moving forward here, are you going to miss good old Poloniex? You're going to miss the old days of the Polo Troll Box. Do you care in the slightest? And what are your thoughts about what happened with Polo? Was it because they stopped innovating and adding services and delisting coins and requiring more levels of KYC? Uh, or was it not their fault? Was it just because of the regulatory environment in the US? They were no longer at an advantage and they lost out because of that. Would be interested to hear your thoughts on that. And then the general state of crypto as well in the comments. So if you are on YouTube, make sure to sound off below. Would love to hear from you there. And if you're listening on the podcast, as always, hit me up on Twitter at crypto underscore Bobby. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you've been here for a while, make sure to hit that damn thumbs up button. Peace, everybody.